Okay, hello grade 6 and welcome again sa ating science class. So, for today, uh, pag-aaralan muna natin ang layers of the earth. Okay, so, although hindi siya kasama sa most essential learning competency, pero sa tingin ko, kailangan natin malaman muna ang layers of the earth bago natin, uh, bago tayo mag-proceed sa mga next lesson natin. Okay, kasi hindi natin masyadong may... Uh, Sa tingin ko, hindi natin uh, maiintindihan ng maayos ang mga susunod nating lesson pag hindi natin malaman itong uh, layers of the earth kasi konektado siya sa ating mga susunod na lesson. Okay? So, bago ang lahat, tatanungin ko muna kayo, what is the shape of the earth? Siguro, ang iba sa inyo mag-iisip or magsasabi, circle, round. Diba? But actually, grade 6, the shape of the earth ay tinatawag nating oblate spheroid. Okay, ano nga ba ang tinatawag nating oblate spheroid? Okay, so look at this picture. So ito daw yung shape ng earth. So ito yung tinatawag nating oblate spheroid. So pag sinabing oblate spheroid, so mapapansin daw natin na ang north pole and south pole ng earth is slightly or are slightly flattened, medyo patag. While the equator, sa gitna ng Earth, is slightly bulging. So that is the result of Earth's rotation. Kaya naging, naging ganon ang kanyang shape. So ang shape niya, pag tinanong kayo ulit, is oblate spheroid. Okay? So next, so there are... The Earth is made up of three parts, or three major parts. So one is the lithosphere. So the lithosphere is the solid part of the Earth. So ano ba yung mga solid parts ng Earth? Of course, mountains, hills, land, soil, so rocks. So yun ang mga halimbawa or belong sa tinatawag nating lithosphere. Next is the hydrosphere. So hydro means water. So, hydrosphere is the liquid part of the Earth. Yan. So, ocean, seas, rivers, etc., etc. And number three is the atmosphere. So, the atmosphere is the gaseous part of the Earth. Yan. So, yung atmosphere natin is the blanket of uh, air that surrounds our planet. Okay. So, pero hindi yun ang lesson natin ngayon. So, ang lesson natin is the interior layer of the earth. When we say interior, sa loob. Okay. So, kailangan nating hatiin ang ating mundo. Okay. Or biyakin ang ating mundo para makita natin yung ating or the interior parts of the earth. Okay. So, ano nga ba ang, the in, ang mga parts or the interior layers of the earth? So, we have the crust, the mantle, and the core. So the core is divided into two, the inner core and the outer core. Okay. So sa ibang libro, tatlo lang. Crust, mantle, core. So yung core lang kasi ay hinati nila sa dalawa, the inner and the outer. Okay. Yan. So this is the crust, this is the mantle, this is the outer core, and the inner so, isa-isahin natin yan sa ating lesson ngayon. Okay. So, unahin natin si crust. Ano nga ba si crust? What are the characteristics? What, is the comp what are the composition of the crust? Gaano siya ka kakapal? Gaano siya kanipis? Parang ganon. Yan. So, yan ang crust na tinatawag natin. Okay. So, the crust is the layer that you live on. O, dyan tayo nakatira sa crust. And it is the most widely studied and understood. Kasi nga, dito tayo sa earth, uh, dito tayo sa, sa crust, so kaya yan ang palagi nakikita, yan ang mas widely studied ng mga geologists o yung mga scientists na nag-aaral tungkol sa earth. So it is the thinnest layer and the topmost layer of the earth. So the thinnest, when I say thinnest, it is pinakamanipis and the topmost, pinakaibabaw na layer ng earth. It is about 8 to 40 kilometers thick. It is made up of loose solid rocks and its temperature is about 22 degrees Celsius. Okay, so tandaan natin ha. 
that the crust is the thinnest and the topmost layer of the earth. Okay, so the crust is divided into two. One is the continental crust, which is located beneath or under the continent. So its thickness ranges from 32 to 40 kilometers. Okay, so ito yung tinatawag natin, continental crust. So ang mga continental crust ay makikita sila under or beneath the continents. Another one is the oceanic crust. So, oceanic crust is located beneath or under the ocean. So, it is about 8 kilometers thick. So, napakanipis lang ng oceanic crust at makikita sila under the ocean. Okay. So, the crust is composed of two basic rock types, the granite and the basalt. The continental crust is composed mostly of the granite and the oceanic crust consists of volcanic lava rock called the basalt. Okay, so tandaan natin na ang crust ay binubuo lang ng dalawang uri. Mostly, dalawang uri ng bato, the granite and the basalt or the basalt. So, ang continental crust ay binubuo ng mga granite or granite. And ang mga, ang oceanic crust naman, ang bumubuo ay volcanic lava rock called basalt. Okay. So next, before we proceed to or before we reach the next layer of the earth, so may, may mapupuntahan muna tayong layer or portion, not the layer, but portion or zone or place below the crust na tinatawag nating moho or mohorovistic discontinuity. So the zone that or region that separates the crust from the mantle. So it was discovered in 1909 by Andreha Mohorovic. Okay. So ipinangalan sa kanya yung lugar na yon or yung zone na yon dahil siya ang nakadiscover noon. So ganun sa science pag may mga contribution ka sometimes uh, mas pag maganda yung contribution mo sa science so pinapangalan sa yung mga bagay ba. Okay? Yes. Let's proceed to the another layer, to the next layer which is the mantle. Yeah. So the mantle is located below the crust. It is about 2,900 kilometers thick. It is the thickest layer of the earth. So, tandaan, ha? Sabi, it is the thickest layer of the earth. So, pag sinabing thickest, pinaka makapal. Okay? It is divided into two parts. The outer portion, which is composed of solid rocks. The inner portion, which is made up of liquid or molten rocks called magma. Okay. So, bakit kaya natutunaw na yun or nagiging uh, liquid na yung mga rock? It is because the temperature of the mantle ranges from 1,420 degrees Celsius up to 2,200 degrees Celsius. So, imagine nyo kung gaano kainit ang ganong temperature. Kaya ang mga bato sa ilalim, especially sa inner portion of the mantle, ay molten na or in liquid state na kasi sa sobrang init. Okay. Ang tawag natin doon ay magma. O trivia lang. Ano bang pinagkakaiba ng magma sa lava? Maliban sa spelling. <laughs> Maliban sa spelling, di ba? Okay. So, ang pagkakaiba, pag sinabi nating magma, so molten rock inside the earth. So, kung andito pa siya sa loob, andyan pa siya sa loob ng earth, so, ang tawag sa kanya ay magma. When the, la when the magma reach, uh, or pag ando na siya sa surface ng earth, for example, dinala siya because of volcanic eruption, so ang tawag na sa kanya ay lava. Pag nasa surface na sa ng earth. Pero pag nasa loob pa siya ng earth, ang tawag sa kanya ay magma. Okay? Next layer is the core. So, sabi ko nga kanina, ang core I divided into two, the inner and the outer core. Okay, so the core is the innermost or the centermost layer of the earth. Centermost, innermost. Pinakagitna ng earth. Ang tawag doon, ang layer na yon ay core. And it is the hottest layer of the earth. When I say hottest, pinaka mainit. Okay, it's divided into two, the outer and the inner core. So, the outer core 
is about 2,880 kilometers thick. It is made up of molten iron and nickel. Yan. Molten iron and nickel. So, pag sinabing iron and nickel, so, ano yon Metal. Bakal. So, its temperature is about 2,200 degrees Celsius. Okay. So, kung kanina doon sa inner portion of the mantle, ang mga rocks to now na because of the very high temperature, pagdating natin sa core or sa outer core, mga bakal naman, which is also in liquid state or nasa uh, molten na sila or tunaw na sila, bakal yon So, ganun kainit ang outer core na kahit bakal ay natutunaw. Okay? Next is the inner core. So, it is about 2,560 kilometers thick. It is made up of solid iron and nickel. Its temperature is about 7,000 degrees Celsius. So, kung titingnan natin, ang inner core is hotter than the outer core. Pero tingnan natin kung ang kanyang composition. Ang kanyang composition, solid iron and nickel. Sir, bakit ganon? Eh, sobrang init niya ng inner core, tapos solid iron and nickel pa rin. Eh, doon nga sa mantle, 2,200 uh, degrees Celsius lang. Tunaw na ang mga bato, ganun din sa outer core, tunaw na rin ang mga bakal. How about dito sa inner core? Napaka-taas, napaka-taas na ng, napaka-init na, 7,000 degrees Celsius. Remember, the inner core is hotter than the surface of the sun. Mas mainit pa siya sa surface ng sun. So, nasa surface yung sa ibabaw lang ng sun. Huwag natin i-compare dun sa pinakagitna ng sun kasi napaka-init yun because the core of the sun, ang kanyang temperature is about 15 million degrees Celsius. Okay. So, bakit kaya According to some scientists, so the inner core of the earth has temperatures and pressures so great that the metals are squeezed together and are not able to move about like a liquid. So, mayroon daw palang force or pressure na napakalakas doon sa inner core na kung saan uh, ang, ang, ang solid iron and nickel ay hindi na, na nagiging liquid. So, nananatili silang solid because of the pressure or the great pressure exerted doon sa mga metals like iron and nickel. So that is the reason na bakit sobrang, kahit sobrang init ng inner core na natili siyang in solid form. Okay? Okay, so quiz time tayo. Tingnan natin kung mayroon kayo natutunan sa tinuro ni Sir. Okay. Okay, just choose the letter of the correct answer. Number one. Okay, time is up. Number two. Okay, number Number four. And number five. Okay, so let us check your answer. So I hope lahat nakakuha ng score na 5. Kung hindi man, 4. Diba? Pag gano'n ang score, congratulations! Okay. So I hope na may natutunan kayo kahit papaano. So sa susunod natin mga video, so i-discuss naman natin yung mga 
iba pang mga lessons para sa fourth quarter. Okay? So, dyan lang muna. Hanggang dito lang muna tayo. So, bye-bye. And please don't forget to subscribe, Sir Chris, sa aking Sir Chris Science Channel. Salamat!